Hello everybody, welcome to today's video. And today, I feel, is gonna be a very special meet. Okay, so a little bit of background first. But back in March, I self-published my very first novel. The first in a series called, well, The Death Blossom Saga. And the first book is called To Save a King. Actually, here it is right here. Like I said, it's the first in a series. It is available on Amazon in ebook, paperback, as you just saw, and on Kindle Unlimited. So if any of you are interested in like vampires, dragons, uh, magic, all that kind of stuff, why not go check it out? I'll add the link to it in the description below. Now, I had planned on having book two released this month. Fortunately, due to a number of reasons, I had to push it back, which I'm a little upset about, not gonna lie, but I'd rather put out a good product, so it's just gonna take a little bit more time. But I will be releasing two books next year, for sure. I am going to be working extremely hard on this. Book two is almost ready. It will be releasing early next year. I'm thinking about February-ish. I haven't fully set that in stone yet. And book three, I plan on releasing around this time next year, sometime in October. The reason I wanted this was because, well, the book does deal a lot with like vampires and stuff like that. It is an adult dark fantasy. It is pretty dark and gritty. So I'll just maybe lay that out. So to pre-celebrate releasing two books next year, I am going to be making a mead dedicated to my books. And I'll basically, we'll make it today and come time for the book release of book three, I will be cracking open a bottle. I'll do a tasting video for you guys and show you what I got. So there's that. And yeah, I guess let's get to making this mead. So the mead we're gonna be making today, we're gonna end up calling it Vampire's Blood. Uh, in honor of my books. It does, like I said, deal a lot with vampires and stuff. Like, a basically think vampire apocalypse in a fantasy world. So, obviously for this mead, I needed it to be really red. And I wanted something a little different. I was going to do, like, cherries or something, but eh, I kind of wanted to go a different route. And then I thought, you know what, this is the perfect time of year to make a mead with my two favorite fruits. I guess the stars of the show for today are, you can't really see it, it's in a bowl here, but, and they are, these were frozen and then thawed, but, try to get a good one, but, raspberries, and good old pomegranates. So that's right, we're gonna be making a pomegranate raspberry meat. So, pomegranates, they are my number one favorite fruit. So, First thing first, I'll show you the best way to cut open a pomegranate and get all that fantastic juice out of there. Cause this will be our base. So first off, you need a knife. Paring knife is good. It's been sanitized and everything. Now you see the top here, you wanna kind of cut in at an angle. Just kind of go around. Pop that off. Now you want to make just a light cut all the way around. Don't go too deep or you're going to end up cutting the little globes, I guess. I don't know what you call them exactly. And then you're just going to simply pull it apart. Look at that. Nice and simple. Look at that. They're like little gems. They're just fantastic. Mm. There's hundreds of these. 
So that's a lot of juice in there that we need to squeeze out. So the next step we're gonna do is we're gonna set this off to the side. We're gonna reach down and use some palm juice. Um, yeah, this is 100% pomegranate juice. According to the back, it's juice from 12 California pomegranates. So yeah, I've got a couple of these. And I will be using some actual pomegranate uh, globes, whatever, some actual ones with the seeds and everything. But I froze them first because that'll help the yeast uh, break them down and everything. And I just threw them in a Ziploc bag. And there's a bunch of juice in there already. And then I'm just gonna kind of crush them with a rolling pin. Uh, we'll get to that, but uh, first, let's get our jugs of pomegranate juice in here. So, okay, I emptied in those two bottles. That gave me about uh, three liters. Uh, it's not quite a full gallon, but this will add some more. So I'm gonna crush these up, measure the juice in there, and then if I'm short a little bit, which I think I might be, I'll add a little bit of water. Uh, once I'm done crushing this up, I will let you know how short I was. Okay, so I don't know if you can see, we are a little bit short, not by much. I'll have to add about two cups of water to this. So before I do that, this is all the seeds and stuff left. And I mean, there'll be a little bit more juice in there. I'm going to just add this into my little baggie here uh, that has my raspberries in it. Uh, now I should note that it was two of the 1.4 liter jugs of the pomegranate juice. And this was another like one pound, 13 ounces of uh, pomegranate seeds. Uh, these I'm gonna add to the raspberries. For now, I'm just using, it ended up being about one pound, 12 ounces of raspberries. Uh, this is gonna go into primary. Once, I'm, once it's done fermenting and stuff, I'll rack it over to secondary. I will have a little sample and I might add some more raspberries in secondary uh, just to see, but I will keep notes and stuff and I will keep you guys informed on that. So let's add this to here. Okay, so we have our juice in there. Uh, now I'm gonna add my honey. I want this to end up being about uh, 12%. So add about two and a half pounds of honey. I'll mix that in, take a gravity rating and add more if I, as I need to, till I hit that gravity that I want. Okay, confession time. While I was adding my honey, I had a little bit of an oopsie and I dropped the honey into the bucket. And when I pull, was pulling it out, I squeezed it and more went in there than what I wanted. It ended up being two, two pounds, 12 ounces of honey. Gave it a stir, I measured it, and it was sitting at about 1.030, which is way higher than what I wanted. So what I ended up having to do is add some water, give it a stir, add some water, give it a stir, just to kind of cut down. I really don't want this you know, well, now it's probably gonna be about 13% or so. I got it to a starting gravity of 1.100. So it'll be about 13, 14%-ish if it ferments out completely. Yeah, my bad, but what do you do? Things happen, you adapt. So now what I'm going to do before I add the rest of my fruit and everything is I'm going to add my nutrients. So I just, I pre-measured them all out and I'm gonna go with my standard starting nutrients, which is one teaspoon of Fermate O, half a teaspoon of Fermate K, and a quarter teaspoon potassium uh, carbonate. Uh, for this mead, we will be using half a package of D47 yeast. And the reason I'm using that is because I've got it sitting there and I wanna use it up. I'm going to add my uh, nutrients, my yeast. I'll give that a stir. 
and then I'll just add my fruit, which is in a bag. But let's mix in this stuff first. So let's just dump this in. That's everything in there all together. And my yeast. Nutrient yeast. Nutrients and yeast are in there. I've mixed it to high hell. You want to make sure you mix it really good. Get a ton of air in there. That'll help the yeast. Now, for my nutrient schedule, I told you what I put in here at pitch. And normally what I do is I'll add another teaspoon of Fermato on day two, and then another teaspoon uh, of Fermato on day four. But I found with D47, I don't need to add that last uh, bit of Fermato uh, on day four. I'm even gonna have to play it by ear on this one, depending on how it starts fermenting, because I've had D47 yeast the Honestly, it just eats through everything super fast. And there's been times I haven't even had to add the uh, second edition of Fermaid O because by the time day two comes around, it's fermented completely um, out. Like, so that's all mixed in. All that's left is to add my bag. And this is why I use these fruit bags is I can just simply go like that. This also makes it easier for when you're racking it into secondary because to remove my fruit I just have to lift it out and it'll be done but uh, yeah slap our lid on and get our air rock on and there we have it uh, vampire blood mead is what we're gonna end up calling it which is actually kind of fitting because well, by the time this video comes out, it'll be very close to Halloween. And also, make sure you guys like and subscribe. Click the little bell icon so that way you get notified whenever we post videos. And yeah, uh, I think this is going to turn out fantastic. And like I said, if you're interested, click on the link down below or go search it up on Amazon. My first book is called To Save a King. It's book one of the, uh, the series. Sorry, I was gonna say trilogy, it's not. Right now the series is slated for about seven books. So yeah, there's that. Thank you for joining me today. And as always, I hope you have a great day. Happy brewing and cheers my friends. <laughs>